All right. Let's make sure we're running. No SD card. Oh, hey. It would help if I had an SD card in here. I know what I'm doing. I'm a trained professional. Okay. Now we're recording. Hello, it is I, Josh, Yudsora Van Behale from the Black Tower Podcast. Thanks for tuning in real quick for this very special segment of BTP Reacts. I think, oh man, I can't even, I can't even think like, okay, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to dive into it. First off, first and foremost, this is going to be a no spoilers review of the first two episodes of the Wheel of Time TV show. Oh, it was so good. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything and I know I'm not going to spoil anything because if I do accidentally say something that I shouldn't say, I'm going to go back and edit it out. So you are 100% safe. Mahale's honor. Um, but I wanted to kind of go over my experience. I wanted to talk about, uh, what the Denver theater was like, you know, the whole experience just from the ground up and just give you my overall thoughts on the TV show itself, because there's a lot there and it was really amazing. So for starters, we started off, I, you know, I figured I, as we all did, we found out last minute that, oh gosh, they're doing these, these screenings and it's going to be amazing. Everybody's got to go. We got to go. And then we find out that there's content creators that are going to be hosting these uh, different events. And I got to say, it was super, super exciting. Um, I picked up my tickets for the Denver showing thinking that, uh, you know, this is a last minute thing, but I'm not missing out and booked my plane tickets, booked a hotel and said, I'm on my way. This is, this is happening. And then I went, Oh yeah, maybe I should ask for the time off of work. <laughs> so I had just come back from a family vacation, went into work on Thursday and said, yeah, Hey boss, um, can I have Monday off? <laughs> so that was fun. Everything was good though, though. They, uh, they sent me off on my way. For me to have fun whatnot so i flew in got in the airport flew into denver uh had a great time there got checked into my office or my hotel room um spent a few hours hanging around downtown before i could check into my hotel room got to scope out the the theater um got to scope out some food places it was pretty good um it was then that i learned that uh well, I had learned previously that there were going to be other people there, but at one point in time, I had learned that Alyssa Powers, um, you guys know her, I guess she's one power ballads now, um, and you know her from the Wheel of Time parody competition, where she did the Andor and Royals song, which, absolutely great. She's working on other parodies too, she's absolutely fun, uh, super fun person, she showed up, and uh, we went and got dinner and hung out, we got to scope the place out a little bit. Um, then we, the next, you know, retired, go to bed, wake up the next morning and, uh, Lauren is on his way in. He's the one, Lauren from Unraveling the Pattern. First off, he's just the nicest guy in the world. He's pr one of the nicest guys you'd ever want to meet. Um, and he's the one who's hosting the event. Uh, Amazon has asked him to host the event. So he's on his way in and he's, he's messaging Alyssa and I, and he's saying, all right, you guys are my boots on the ground. You know, let's let's hang out when I get there. Let's come up with a plan and let's see what we want to do with this. I said, sure, not a problem. He was coming in and Alyssa and I decided we're going to kick this party off right by watching the different uh, live streams. So we had Daniel B. Green's live stream up on the main TV. I had the dusty wheel on my laptop and I had Critter XD her TikTok live on my phone and then we had Dragon Mount playing on Alyssa's phone. I put a picture of it on Twitter. It was it was laughable, really, because you know we had charted out you know who was first in line as they were going down, and we were like, okay, you know, Daniel Henney's coming here. He's he's talking to these people now. Now we gotta listen to that, and then we gotta go over here and listen to them. And and so we just had a lot of fun following that. It was chaos at times. It was chaos at times. Um, but that was really really cool. It was really exciting to me to see the actors. Um, and how excited they were to play these roles and not only to play the roles, but, you know, we had numerous times where people were saying, um, 
yeah, as soon as we as soon as we were told it was Wheel of Time, you know, we all went out and bought the books, and we started looking up content creators, and we wanted to, you know, make sure that we were doing a good job for the for the fans because we know how passionate you guys are, and for me, that was kind of a standout moment because when you have a fan base like this who's been waiting for so long and who is so passionate and loves this story so much like we do it's always really great to know that that love is infectious and it's the love that people find um people don't find you know the negative comments and the hate and things like that what they find is people like us who just love the story and love the wheel of time and are super pumped for the tv show to come out and that was really cool it was really exciting to see you know Matt Hatch there and and Jason Denzel and just everybody else that was there it was it was super super exciting to see them it, you know kind of touching a dream cuz let's be honest that's what it is i mean they got to introduce they got to uh interview uh, the different cast members and it just looked like a super stellar time so you know congratulations to you guys by the way that was super cool um, well, the stream shuts down and they go in to watch the show. We get the message from Lauren and he says, okay, I'm on my way in. Let's go do this thing. So Alyssa and I, we meet up with Lauren. We get a couple pictures because, you know, you got to. <laughs> and we go down to a sandwich place that's right next to the Alamo Draft House Theater, which is where the showing is going to be. And, and we decided let's have lunch here because it'll be a nice lunch and we can scope the place out and uh you know maybe we'll see some people lining up ha 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 just kidding we won't there's probably going to be like 10 people there you know and it was it was a lot of fun uh because we were there around 1 1 30 finishing up lunch and three people had already shown up and we were going oh wow this is going to be good and so lauren had to run back to his hotel to grab a couple things and Alyssa and i went back to the hotel to uh get changed into our cosplay outfits if you didn't see my cosplay outfit uh you should definitely look on our twitter because i posted some pictures there and i posted some videos there basically i wore a black suit black pants black shoes black vest black shirt uh with my legitimate uh bedali jewelry sword and dragon pin on the collar of the button-up black shirt and then the piece de resistance I have that was a gift from to me was a black Armani Damascus pattern jacket. And it's really, it's this beautiful black jacket that's got this really crazy cool texture in it. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite things, and I don't really get a chance to wear it very often. <laughs> Go figure. And uh, so this was a perfect, perfect time to do that. So I did that. I, I suited up. I was in full Ashaman regalia. We show up to the Alamo Draft House Theater, and we've got a crowd of people already showing up. I posted a picture of that on Twitter, um, and as time went on, you know, it was Lauren and Alyssa and I kind of mingling and mixing with the people and talking to them and getting to know them, which, by the way, if you're from Denver and you're at the premiere and you're watching this right now, it was super fun to get to meet you. Thank you so much for coming out. Because one of the best parts about any event like this is meeting people in real life who've also read The Wheel of Time. Because then you get to talk about it. You get to geek about it. And you don't have to worry about people going like, okay, they're on about The Wheel of Time again. Um, and then, you know, that just gets amplified when you've got, you know, 200 people that show up that are avid Wheel of Time fans who are just as passionate and loving about this story as we are. And just, oh, it was great. It was a, it was a wonderful experience. Um, I could have done that all night. I could have jumped up and down the line uh, asking people questions. Uh, Sam from Water and Shade showed up, and she was an absolute hoot. Uh, it was super cool. So it was just a fun time had by all. There was, there was absolutely an absolute blast getting to know all these people, hearing their stories and hearing about all the people who have read the books, hearing about the people who just started reading the books, um, you know, there was a couple of people there where there was like, I heard there was a TV show come out and I went out and, and bought the books. And then we had people who, you know, picked up the books in a, in a USO box in an airport on their way on an deployment. And, you know, it just seems like there's a lot of these stories like that. And it, it was really great to hear those stories while in line waiting for and, you know, tasting the savor, as it were, of the, the anticipation of this tv show that we've been waiting for for decades now 
So then the moment of truth finally came, and the Amazon representatives came up and said, okay, it's time, let's go, here's your ticket, go on in. And I remember going in, sitting down, you see the big theater screen, and there's this big graphic, and it's, you know, the Wheel of Time, and share your responses on the Wheel of Time, and uh, has all the hashtags, hashtag the Wheel of Time, and the suspense was just amazing everybody was coming in happy excited ready to do this and when it started up again no spoilers i'm not going to get into it when it started up it was i was a kid again i was a kid again on christmas man and santa had just come it was it was amazing and then watching the story unfold and seeing that yeah right out of the gate there's changes um, right out of the gate, there are different differences between the eye of the world and the TV show. And, oh, it, it was just stunning. I mean, visually, it was beautiful. Um, the acting was great. The dialogue, I thought, was, was absolutely fantastic. Um, there were some changes that were... I, I can see immediately when Brandon Sanderson made his comment about there are some changes that are going to be controversial to the fans. Um, he doesn't necessarily agree with some of them, but he understands why they were happening, and and, and that was kind of his... But he believed in Rafe and the and the production team, and, and I got to say, I, I understand why. Um, there were some changes that I was not too sure of at first, but... You know, after watching the second episode, and I'm already sold, and I'm already going, it, it was beautiful. It was stunning. It was perfect. Uh, there are also changes that were like, whoa, that is so much better. <laughs> it was so good. Uh, there were changes that, uh, you know, were just shocking to me, just like how awesome it was. Um, you watch the first episode, you watch the second episode, and the title opening is just simply stunning beautiful visually beautiful um it was amazing it, it was fantastic and, and we and i know a lot of us have had a lot of fun picking apart the trailers that they've been releasing out and i i have just based on the couple of little easter eggs and the couple of little bits that i caught and knowing that other people caught others that i didn't catch I believe that these episodes are going to be filled with these little Easter eggs and these little nods and these little callbacks. And I believe it's going to be very in the spirit and energy of Robert Jordan's writing style, where you have callbacks to characters that you hadn't seen for eight books. Almond Bunt, look him up. I'm not saying he's in the TV show. I'm just saying Almond Bunt in the books. Look him up. It'll surprise you how often that dude shows up. But at the end of the two episodes, you know, we got to watch a little, you know, behind the scenes thing. And I imagine this will all be available on Amazon tomorrow. And then we got to watch the one of the animated shorts. And at the end of it, after everything was done, I was breathless. I was absolutely breathless, absolutely speechless. Um, which is part of the reason why I waited so long to do this video. I know that, you know, it's Monday, today's Thursday, uh... I, wait, I purposely waited till Thursday to do this video because A, I'm someone who I'll walk into a theater and watch a movie and my immediate reaction is, oh, that's so great. And then a week later, I'm like, oh, you know that? There's a couple of problems. That was problematic. I didn't get the sense here. I, I walked in and I said, oh, that's great. And I'm still going, oh, that's great. And I cannot wait for tomorrow where we're hosting a watch party and we're going to watch these bad boys probably two or three times, if I'm being honest, because it was just, just perfect, just beautiful. Um, and then I wanted to wait till Thursday, you know, till the day before, because the other thing is, is, you know, you guys have seen a lot of these by now. Um, and, and one of the things that I've noticed is I've noticed a lot of people that are voicing concerns. They've read some reviews that you know, they were kind of questioning and, and they've heard other people talk about it. And they, I want to just hopefully put your mind at ease a little bit. It is absolutely a wonderful story. Absolutely a beautiful representation of the Westlands and the Wheel of Time and the people there. And what really, to me, what really sold it 
was the actors and their extremely astute ability to give us the nonverbal dialogue, their body language, their facial expressions, their energy, their chemistry can all easily be seen through the, through the lens of the viewer. And they just did an absolutely marvelous job. I am so excited to see the third episode tomorrow the rest of the animated shorts. I'm so excited to watch those. And this is the other thing. It's it's th four days later now, and I'm excited. I am legitimately excited to see the two episodes that I've already seen again. Uh, I, I want more. And and when we've got these three episodes out, I'm going to be, you know, watching them in the morning uh, with work. <laughs> you know, this is just an absolutely amazing visual piece of art. And I... Hope that you guys are all as excited as I am. And I know that when the show drops, I'm going to be here to talk about it. I know thousands upon thousands of others of you are going to be here to talk about it. And I just want you guys to know, uh, come talk to us, shoot us a message, you know, email us at blacktarpod at gmail.com. Shoot us a message on Twitter, tag us or DM us. Um, Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, anywhere we've got. Jump in our Discord. There's always people there that are willing to uh, discuss the Wheel of Time with everybody. And, yeah, just come on. Have fun with it because it's going to be great. And I appreciate you guys tuning in. I appreciate you guys listening to us. Go to our website at blacktowerpod.com. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Be awesome. And, you know, Tyshar Amazon, uh, Tyshar, all of the actors and all of the production crews and all of the teams that it took to put this together because you guys are easily heroes of the horn, in my opinion. So thank you so much. And from myself, <laughs> I have been Josh, your sort of on my hail from the Black Tower Podcast, wishing you the happiest and best of the show. Thank you so much.